Hello, everybody. Andrew Blake from the DigitalAudioManual.com with another episode of Composing, Producing, Mixing, and Mastering in Cubase and WaveLab for the week of October 31st, 2025. So the purpose of these videos is to allow you to join me as we begin the process in Cubase, creating a brand new idea completely from scratch, producing and mixing that idea and taking it to a completed song and then taking that song and importing it into WaveLab where we can do the final finishing touches and mastering process. My hope and goal with these videos is to try to give you some kind of creative blueprint and workflow in an effort to inspire you and move you on to taking whatever sounds you already have and begin making some kind of music, taking that and all the tools that are available in both Cubase and WaveLab, and to go through the whole process from beginning to end. And of course, you're going to see all kinds of actual tips and techniques and their various application all along the way. So with all that being said, if you're ready to get started, let's begin. So I want to make something with kind of a world flavor to it. Let me examine some chord choices. Go to the chord pads. I think I'm going to start by trying to bounce back and forth between the C-sharp minor and a G-sharp minor with the chord pads. Make some kind of pattern like this. Record this. This first sound is nothing more than a guide track, just to give me something to work against. I'm going to go over to the media rack and the VST instruments and Hallion 7. And again, I'm emphasizing techniques that you can use with anything because you may not have any of the sounds that I have on my computer. But what I'm trying to show you is how you can use the sounds that you have, whatever they are, but dig into what you have and create something from that. You already have these sounds on your computer, whatever they are. Learn to use them, make some music out of them, and it's just a great way to become acquainted with what sound you actually have. Instead of just sitting there and browsing through endless presets, put them to work and create something out of it. In my Hallion set, and I think these sounds are all part of their absolute collection, but I'm coming down to this option that says World Percussion, and there's just a lot of great stuff in here. Let's just click through some of these. Right there is something that I'm looking for. Let's see if we can use that. I'm going to record it in. Let's see what else we have. Let me try this turkey's percussion. And they have another pack called World Instruments. Let's see what we have here. I'm going to try this one. I want to get some kind of real ethnic sounding scale. I'm going to move my piano chords up to the chord track. Show the scale. And I want to change some things on this chord track. I'm going to turn off automatic scales, come over here to the picture of the scale, open up this little keyboard. I'm going to choose this one for harmonic minor. I'm going to set it for C sharp. And then I'm going to come to this instrument, go to the chords tab, tell it to use scales. And then I'm going to record a couple of different lanes of different passes, trying to get different ideas in here. Then I can open up these lanes. And I have all these different takes. And then I can use my comp tool to audition different ones. If I don't like something, I can just erase it. I'm going to put these into a folder in a group. They need some reverb on it. Let's open up the channel. Let's try that new shimmer reverb. Open it up. Right away, that sounds good. It's too strong. I'm going to turn the mix off. That sounds pretty haunting. Let's record some bass on that. I'm going to put a kick drum in there, too. I'm going to change up that main sound. See what other options we have. Mm -hmm. 
It has some great sounds. Let's make this MIDI a little more legato. So this is one of those cases where I really like the sounds right away from this instrument. And I like the changes I get from the other different sounds in this set. What I'm going to do here is just keep this section and repeat it four times. And I use a shortcut key for the global copy so I can quickly make these extra copies. Then I'm going to isolate this particular track, duplicate this four times. I'm going to quickly bounce these and make some changes to them later. But it works for now. Make a selection with my scissors tool, hold my alt key, and I can quickly make new sections real easy on these. Mute these out. Then I can go to the next track, just quickly mute like that. I can experiment with the sounds here. I'm going to go back to the one I just had with this one. Then mute these out. Open this back up. Experiment with the different sounds here until I find something I like. I like that one. Then once I have four sounds that I basically like, I'll just cascade through them like this. Maybe I want a different instrument to show up. And I get something like this. I'm going to put my usual endless smile on the end of this section. It gives me this effect. I'm going to quickly go back and get my bass and drums into their own group and folder. Keep a blank original instrument track in here with them. That makes it easy if I want to come back and change the MIDI part or add extra MIDI parts into this group. I'm going to take all my world percussion out of this group, put it into its own group, because I'm going to do a lot of extra processing to this. Give it a slightly different color and just double check everything real quick. So now the challenge with something like this is we have these great percussion drum sounds, but what happens, sometimes we need to get in there, work on a particular sound, and we have all these different instruments playing together. How do we get to the individual instruments to do some separate processing? So normally with most drum parts, I just do a dissolve apart to get all the MIDI parts on their own separate tracks. But with an instrument like this, we open up the MIDI part, there's only one note being played. And that one note is triggering that elaborate pattern. I'm going to duplicate this part so in case I mess something up, I can go back. But if we open up the instrument interface on this, as we look around, up here in the right corner, there's a little picture of a MIDI chord. It says drag the MIDI phrase to the host sequencer. Well, let's see what happens when we do that. So I click on the picture, drag it down to the track, release it, and all of a sudden, I actually have a MIDI part with individual sounds. I click on any note, still playing that pattern. I go back to the instrument again and just turn off the instrument. Now I have all my individual sounds on different keys. And if I go back into the MIDI pattern, click on any of these notes again, now I have the individual sounds. And now this could be dissolved and allow me to process all these individual sounds. Now that we know that, go back to this instrument for a minute. What are all these buttons along the top? These actually change to different patterns. If I just play one single note, I get that pattern. But if I switch to this number and play the same exact note, I get a completely different pattern. Let's go to number three, play that. All kinds of variety just by hitting these different numbers. Once I've chosen a different number and have a different pattern, now when I drag this picture of the MIDI onto the track, I get a completely different MIDI pattern. So this little picture of the MIDI reflects whatever pattern I choose up here. Let's take all these patterns and drag them onto the track. Go to number three, drag it on. Number five, finally number eight. 
because some of these patterns are shorter than the others, I can do some things like this. Take my range tool, copy a few bars from this, hold alt and drag it over. And I can take these patterns, break them up, adding even more variety. And once again, I have to remember to turn this instrument off or it will just sit here and play the same pattern over and over again. Now, if I listen to this pattern with all these variations, copied parts, I have something like this. Wow, what a bunch of different ethnic percussions. Now I'm going to take this and bounce this track. And now I can take this particular event, go up to MIDI, tell it to dissolve the part, say OK. And now I have every one of these parts on their own individual tracks. And there's a lot of them. I'm going to bring my usual transitions into this, select all these different transitions. I'm going to change this piano sound as well. I'm going to add a different instrument, choose the grand. Then I'll drag this MIDI part down, get rid of that original guide track. Everything is pretty much out of balance. I'm going to do a quick mix down to get everything right. I can just select all my tracks, hold Alt and Shift, turn down the pre-gain of everything, recenter the fader to zero. Then one by one, I'll bring these tracks back in. So now we have a rough mix. I'm going to create an arranger part up here. It helps me to keep the different sections organized. I'm going to duplicate this whole part. Now on this part, I'm just going to mute everything out temporarily. And then I'm going to experiment with the different elements and see if I like something on its own. I think we'll add that shimmer reverb to the piano as well. Here's where we can use these dissolved percussion parts. I'm going to put these in a group in a folder because now that makes it easy to mute out sections quickly. Let's experiment with the different elements. We'll bring this one in first. Then let's see what else we have. And then this last section. Let's go ahead and duplicate this part. Let's go back and put the whole drum set in. I'm going to add some filter to this piano as well. I'm going to open up the arranger editor, create my basic track. Have my parts repeated the way I want them and then flatten the chain. And then when the first part repeats, we can experiment with some of these individual percussion elements again. And then I decided that this needed something a little bit more. So I went back into my VST instruments, into the Hallion sets, and they have a group in here called Hot Brass. This thing is loaded with all kinds of different brass sounds. I took this active section out of here. And this allows me to play these different brass parts. So I put some various stabs and accented different beats as I went through this. I decided to put some more strings in here. And ultimately, this started to really turn into something pretty fun to listen to. So once it's done, or pretty close to being done, then it's time for me to bring things into WaveLab. And again, if you don't have WaveLab, you can certainly just continue the process right in Cubase. But part of the thing I'm sharing with you in these videos is the way that I do it, so you can look at it, analyze it, decide if there's anything in here that may help you in your creative workflow. So in order to get this into WaveLab, by having this arranger track up here with all my parts, all I have to do is select every part here, and then I know I'm going to have a border around the whole part of my song. I open up the Export Audio dialog. Again, there's an option to set it to the project name. If I wanted to make any changes here, I could, but I have everything set up in my template already, so I really don't have to mess with anything here. And then ultimately, I go down to this drop-down, and I say, open it up in WaveLab. Say export, and then in a second or two, it opens up in WaveLab. Once I have my stereo wave, and I go about adding some effects, in this case, I put on the master rig. I used an EQ to dip out a little bit in the high mid. But the multiband compressor added a little bit of saturation, the imager, and finally the limiter. The main thing I want to share here is the real advantage of using Cubase and WaveLab. For example, when I first imported this song into WaveLab, it took me up until version 6. Until I actually had this the way I wanted it, there was always just one little element not quite right. At first, there was a balance problem, so I went back and redid it in Cubase, did another version, and I could tell that I needed some extra instruments, like that brass and the strings, and another version. Then I didn't like the ending, so I had to go back again. 
import another version. Very easy to go back and forth between Cubase and WaveLab. Great the way they've integrated the two. But it wasn't until six versions later that I finally said, yeah, that works. Now, once I've gotten to this final stage where I got my effects the way I want them, think I have things sounding the way I want, then I have to render this thing off. So I go to this render tab and I say, start the rendering process. Then I get this final version. So let's play this thing from the beginning, see what we've accomplished in this session. Once again, don't forget to stop by the digitalaudiomanual.com. Download your free preview of the manual, which you can get from the description and the link of this video. Thanks for watching. Now go create something great on your own, and then I'll see you next time.